So if you're just showing up, we are on our backs and arriving in a comfortable position. So whether that's full Shavasana, legs straight out, knees bent and knocked in towards each other, or feet together and knees dropped open in a Supta Baddha Konasana. So find a comfortable position for yourself and starting to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, exhale. In through the nose. And out through the mouth, exhale. And then we're gonna to start to come into your ujjayi breath. So it's that deep yogic breath in and out through the nose. So as we inhale, try and open up that nasal cavity, opening up the back of the throat. And as you exhale, feel that breath as it scrapes against the back of the throat, becoming a little bit more audible, allowing you to feel that breath as it travels in and out. And then we're gonna move into some box breathing. So let's take one big inhale together. And full exhale. And then we're gonna inhale on a count to four. So inhale for four, three, two, one. Holding for four, three, two, one. Exhaling for four, three, two, one. Holding your exhale for four, three, two, one. Inhaling for four, three, two, one. Holding for four, three, two, one. Exhaling for three, two, one. Holding your exhale for four, three, two, one. Two more. Inhaling for four, three, two, one. Holding for four, three, two, one, exhaling four, three, two, one, holding your exhale four, three, two, one, last one, inhale for four, three, two, one, holding for four, three, two, one, exhaling four, three, two, one, holding for four, three, two, and one. Take a deep breath in and a full breath out, exhale. And go ahead and draw your knees in towards your chest. Give them a tight squeeze, a little rock side to side. You can do, maybe do a few circles on your low back and your sacrum. If you're circling, take those in the opposite direction. And then we're gonna bring our feet up into a happy baby. So you're gonna reach your arms to the inside of your legs and grab for the outer edges of your feet. And then pulling the knees down towards the floor, keeping your feet as stacked over your knees as you can. And then working the back of your hips down towards the floor. So you're trying to lengthen through the spine. Notice if your shoulders are really hiked up, can you draw those down towards the floor as well? And take a couple deep breaths. Maybe you rock in your happy baby. Maybe you're just finding some stillness. Coming back to that ujjayi breath, in and out through the nose, lengthening your exhales, and then thinking about sinking the breath together. So as you inhale, that top of the inhale kind of blends right into the start of your exhale. So as you breathe in and out, they start to blend together. So if someone were listening to your breath, they might not be able to tell whether you're inhaling or you're exhaling. So one continuous circle of breath. We're going to release our happy baby. We're going to place our feet flat on the floor. We're going to set up for a bridge pose. And have your feet hips distance apart and walk them a little bit closer towards your, your hips. So maybe you could graze your heels with your fingertips. That depends on the length of your torso or your arms, but have them close. Arms down by your side. You're going to press down through your heels. And I want you to imagine that you have a block between your knees. So we don't want our knees to drop out as we lift up into our bridge and we don't want them to collapse in. So we've got a block, we're squeezing this imaginary block between our legs to ignite the inner thighs. 
And we're going to think about keeping those thighs parallel to each other. Press down through the backs of your arms and exhale, lift your hips up towards the ceiling. And just feel the back of your legs, feel the hamstrings and the glutes ignite and turn on. Activate. And then inhale, lower your hips down. And you're going to reach your arms forward. It's kind of like this mini crunch. So reaching your fingertips forward as if you could reach the fronts of your shins. And then inhale, lower your head down and drive your hips up towards the ceiling, pressing through your heels. Again, this whole time imagining that we have that block between our legs. Inhale, lower the hips down. Exhale, reach your arms back forward towards the shins. Inhale, lower the head down. Exhale, drive your hips up towards the ceiling. Squeeze your glutes and hamstrings. Inhale, lower the hips. Exhale, reach your arms forward. Feel the upper abdominals. Inhale, lower the head. Exhale, drive your hips up. Glutes and hamstrings digging through the heels. Inhale, lower down. We'll do two more. Exhale, reach. Inhale, lower the head down. Exhale, drive your hips up. Inhale, lower. Exhale, reach your arms. Last one, inhale, lower. Exhale, drive your hips up. Inhale, lower, and exhale, reach your arms forward. Good, inhale, lower down. We're gonna draw our right knee in towards our chest. You're gonna take your right hand to the top of your right thigh, so just below the knee. Left hand is down by your side. I want you to drive your right arm, your right hand, into the leg and drive your leg back in towards the hand. So you should feel your hip flexors turn on. You should also feel that core start to engage. You're going to keep that connection. And if this feels like too much, you can go back to the regular hip bridge. We're going to try and find our connection to the core as we move into a single leg hip bridge. So drive arm and leg into each other as you drive through your left heel and lift the hips up. And back of the shoulders are pressing down. Inhale, lower the hips down, light tap with the hips, and exhale right back up for number two. Squeeze the glutes. Inhale, lower down, watch that the left knee isn't collapsing out to the side. Exhale, drive and lift. Inhale, lower. Exhale, drive for four, we're doing six. Inhale, lower. Exhale, drive the hips up, squeeze that left glute, press down through your left shoulder. Inhale, lower. And last one, exhale, lift. Inhale, lower down. Set the right foot down, draw your left leg in. Press the hand and thigh into each other, so find that connection. Right hand down by your side. Press down into the right heel and exhale, lift the hips. Inhale, lower back down, keeping those hips neutral. Exhale, lift, driving the hips high. Inhale, lower, watch that the right knee isn't collapsing out. Exhale, drive, keeping the connection, drawing the knee in. Inhale, lower. Exhale, lift for four. Inhale, lower, light tap, exhale for five. Inhale, lower, last one, exhale, lift, and lower back down. Good, drop both knees in towards your chest. Give them a little squeeze, a little rock side to side. And then maybe rocking your, or lifting your head so your nose is reaching towards your knees, your knees are reaching towards your nose extending through the whole back body. And then we're gonna to start to rock forward and back along your spine, rocking all the way up towards your hips and all the way back down towards your head. And we're gonna to start to get a little more momentum and maybe your feet touch as you rock forward. And each time you rock up, maybe you put a little more weight in your feet. Maybe your hips lift. Just trying to work through the core, work through the hips, a little mobility in the ankles and hips as well. Do a couple more, maybe on this one, you lift your hips even higher. And then on this next one, you lift a little bit higher, extending through the knees. And then we're gonna stand all the way up. And maybe you have to support with your hands to get up there. Have your feet hips distance, hands to your hips. Roll your chest open, lifting through your sternum. And then with soft knees, exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold. Just let your head relax. Take a hold of opposite elbows and allow yourself to sway side to side. A deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth, exhale. So let it go. Find your stillness in your fold. As little or as much bend in your knees as you need today. So checking with those hamstrings, starting with the big bend, 
when you lift your hips up to find that straightening of the legs, that deepening of that hamstring. Keeping the head relaxed, keeping the chest and belly resting on your thighs. You release your arms. And then starting from your low back, round your back and scoop your belly in as you roll up one vertebrae at a time, very slowly, stacking the vertebrae. And then head and shoulders come up last, rolling the shoulders back. And then we'll slide our feet together. Big toes touching, heels are separated. And draw your hands to your heart center. Rolling the shoulders back, feel the grounding of your feet. Send that energy all the way up from the floor, through the legs, squeezing those inner thighs together. Lifting the pelvis in and up so we're supporting through our low belly. Lifting and stacking the vertebrae and getting tall through the crown of the head. Take a deep breath in here together. Out through the mouth, exhale. Coming back to your breath, release your arms, moving right into it. Inhale, circle the arms out and up, stretch tall. Exhale, soft knees as we forward fold, head and neck relax. Inhale, lift halfway up to lengthen, engage your upper back, engage your legs. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle the arms, come all the way out and up and drink two half sun salutes. Exhale, hands to your heart, pressing the palms together. Inhale, circle the arms out and up, energizing up. Exhale, hinging from the hips, forward fold, neck relaxes. Inhale, hands to shins, engage, find that flat back. Hold, exhale. Inhale, circle the arms out and up, stretch tall. Pull the palms together to your heart center. Inhale, circle the arms out and up, stretching taller with each one. Exhale, forward fold, head and neck relaxes. Inhale, lift halfway up to lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle out and up, stretch tall. Take a hold of your left wrist, soft knees, side bend. Exhale, getting a nice stretch through that left side body. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, side bend into the left, reaching through that right rib cage. Inhale, lifting back up. Bend your elbows for a cactus shape with your arms, puffing your chest up, getting a little more openness in the upper back and chest. Soft knees, pulling the belly in so we're not in our low back. Inhale, stretch the arms up tall, and exhale, forward fold, head and neck relaxes. Inhale, lift halfway up to lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands, we're gonna step our right leg back. We're gonna lower the knee down. And keep the toes tucked under, inhale, sink your hips, draw your shoulders down the back as best you can. And then exhale, pull the hips up and back as you straighten into your front leg, drawing your right heel down. Inhale, sink your hips, open your chest. Exhale, pull the hips up and back, long spine, drawing that right heel down. Inhale, sinking the hips, last one. Exhale, pull the hips up and back. And then rebend the left leg, step your right foot forward. Halfway up, inhale, fold, exhale. Inhale, circle the arms out and up, stretch tall. Grab a hold of your left wrist, side bend to the right, exhale. Inhale, lift, grab your right wrist, side bend to the left, exhale. Inhale, lifting tall, bend your elbows, cactus shape. Inhale, reach your arms, exhale, forward fold, head and neck relax. Inhale, lengthening through the spine, plant your hands, step your left leg back, lower the knee down, keep the toes tucked. Inhale, sinking your hips as you open up your chest, draw the shoulders down away from the ears. Exhale, pull the hips up and back, draw your right heel down. Inhale, sink the hips, open the chest. Exhale, hips pull up and back, long spine. Inhale, sink the hips. Exhale, pulling the hips up and back. Rebend the legs, plant your hands this time and step your right leg back to meet the left. Pausing in your plank. Soft elbows so we're not hyperextending. Hug your elbows towards each other. Hug your upper arms in. And get really long through the spine. So imagine we have that block between our legs here. Squeeze the inner thighs. Lift your belly so that low belly lifts in and up. And then we're going to shift forward onto our tippy toes. And either on your toes or on your knees, slowly bend your elbows, squeezing them towards your ribs as you lower all the way down. And then we're going to uncurl our toes. And you're bring your arms down next to your side. Palms flat. So we're gonna press the tops of your hand, um, the palms of your hands down into the floor. Bring your feet all the way together. 
And we're trying to press down through all 10 toes. And at the same time, try and press down through the pelvis so that we're lifting our belly away from the floor, protecting our back. And you can feel that as we push our pubic bone down, we get some more space in the low back. So you're gonna press down through the hands, press down through the feet and the pubic bone. And you're gonna lift our chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Get really long through your spine. So continue to press the pubic bone down and lift your navel up as you try and coil your upper spine even higher. And take a deep breath in. Keeping the height, exhale. One more, squeeze your shoulder blades, inhale. And full exhale, keep squeezing those shoulder blades together, pressing down through the pubic bone and release your chest. Exhale, hands right next to your sternum, press your hands, come up onto your hands and knees, all fours. Cat cow, tuck your toes under, inhale, lift your chest, draw your shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest, round your upper back, pull the belly in. Inhale, soft elbows, reach your chest forward, moving into that upper back. Exhale, press to round, navel to spine. One more, and then we're going to segment. Inhale, big back bend, opening your chest. Exhale, press the ground away to round your upper back. You're going to stay rounded in your upper back as you tilt your tailbone back and move one vertebrae at a time. So moving through your low back first into extension, and then your lower thoracic spine then your mid thoracic, your upper thoracic, and then lifting your head. And again, we're gonna go from our tailbone up to our head. So tailbone will tuck first, scooping the belly in, staying arched in your upper back, moving into your lower back, your mid back, your upper back, and your head. And again, one more each direction. Tailbone will tilt back, moving into your low back, mid back, upper back, and head. And again, tailbone tucks first, Scooping the belly, low back, mid back, upper back, and head. We're going to do a flat back, hands directly beneath the shoulders, knees beneath your hips. We're going to take our left heel, reach it straight back, flex through the foot. Now I need to think about your inner thigh. So your left inner thigh is going to roll up towards the ceiling. So that when we extend that leg up, we're moving from the hip and not from your back or your outer hip. You're going to lift that left inner thigh towards the ceiling, press strong into the hands to lift your ribs, lift your navel, and then take your right arm as high as you can up in front of you. So extending your fingertips and your heel as far away from each other as you can, and then exhale, bring your elbow towards your knee and round as much as you can. Inhale, extend the heel back, remember that inner thigh reaches towards the ceiling as you extend your fingertips forward. Exhale, round, elbow to knee, pull the belly in. Inhale, extend, one more, inner thigh up. Exhale, round, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend back out, and then set the hand and knee down. Take your right leg back, reach through the heel. Inner thigh rolls up towards the ceiling, so your toes point straight down. Press into the hands to round the upper back slightly and pull the ribs in. And then extend your left arm forward. Big inhale to stretch long. Exhale, round, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend, heel and fingertips, stretch it apart. Exhale, round, pull the belly in and up. Inhale, extend. Last one, round, elbow towards your knee. Inhale, extend back out, and then hand and knee will come down to the floor. Okay, we're gonna keep our knees directly underneath our hips, and you're gonna walk your hands forward, and we're gonna stay on the pads of our fingertips, so as we're gripping the floor with our fingertips like little gecko fingers. And you're gonna walk them as far forward as you can. And then we're gonna to start to melt our chest towards the floor. So we're melting into our upper back here. Keep the belly gently engaged. Maybe you're a few inches away from the floor. Maybe your chin comes down to the floor. Maybe eventually your chest comes down. We're gonna breathe, keep those arms straight. Breathe into the upper back here. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Two more breaths, keeping the arms straight, deepening your inhales and exhales. One more breath, and exhale. Go ahead and use your belly to rise back up, walk your hands in, shoulders 
directly over your wrist, tuck your toes, lift your knees one inch off the ground. Holding for 10, nine, you can shift a block between your legs, squeeze in to feel your outer hips and your inner thighs. Six, five, soft elbows, four, three, lift your navel in and up, two, and then one, lift your hips up and back for your first downward facing dog. Maybe pedal your feet out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And then find some stillness in your dog. Spread your fingers wide and then just do a quick peek at your hands. Notice if that index finger is lifting away, uh, the, the base of the index finger is lifting away from the floor. Can you root down through that first knuckle? Imagine that if someone were trying to poke underneath your palms, they could not reach underneath them. There's no space around any of the knuckles of the hands. And from that rooting of the hands, hug the upper arms in towards your ears. And about lifting up through the armpits, and then lifting the front ribs in, but then at the same time, reach your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Maybe that means you have to put a little bend in your knees in order to get that long spine. You're going to inhale, keeping that length, shift forward into your plank, tap your shoulders, soft bend in your elbows, and then exhale, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. And draw your feet together, float your right leg up towards the ceiling, inhale, and bend your knee, open the hip, exhale. Now I need to check in here. Most likely your left underarm has dropped down towards the floor and your left hip is reaching towards your left shoulder. I want you to try and reach them as far away from each other as you can. So lift that left shoulder away from the floor as you lift your left hip away from your left shoulder. Reach, find length on both sides of the waist, bringing that right heel closer towards your hip, finding the squaring of your shoulders towards the floor. And then straighten that right leg out, square off your hips. Exhale, bring your knee towards your nose, round the upper back. Inhale, lift the leg all the way up and back, spread through your toes, and exhale, step your foot in between the hands. And then we're gonna lower that left knee down onto the floor, and then bring your hands up to your front thigh. Pull the belly in, and I want you to keep your toes tucked under on that back leg. Draw your right heel and your left knee towards each other. And I want you pressing down through that back foot so much so that you could lift that back knee. We're not gonna lift it yet, but I want you to push down so you're finding action so we're stabilizing through our hips. And then take your arms forward and up, stretching tall. A couple deep breaths here, keep active in the legs. So right heel draws back, left knee draws forward, trying to open up the front of that left hip to the hip flexors, the psoas. And the more active we are in our lower body, the more release we'll actually get. And then we're actively finding that release Rather than owning that range of motion, rather than just passively finding the flexibility. I want to gain mobility, not flexibility. Take one more breath, reaching up through the arms. And then exhale, bring your hands to the floor. Straighten your front legs, scoot your back foot in a few inches, and turn your back toes towards 10 or 11 o'clock. Keep your right toes pointing straight ahead. And pulling your chest forward, inhale. So I want you to, for a moment, press your heels apart. So your right heel is reaching forward, your left heel is reaching back. Do that on your inhale. And then as you exhale, squeeze your heels towards each other as you allow your torso to fold in. Inhale, press the heels apart, extend your chest forward, long spine. Exhale, pull the heels together as you fold. Inhale, long spine, reach your chest forward. Last one, exhale, pull the heels together, so active legs, forward fold. Inhale, reach your chest forward, re-bend your right leg, plant your hands, and step right back into your downward facing dog. Left leg up towards the ceiling, inhale, and bend your knee, open the hip, exhale. Quick check in with that right shoulder and right hip, they most likely dropped towards the floor, so right hip reaching towards your right shoulder, right shoulder dropping down. I'm going to lift your right armpit away from the floor, so you're squaring your shoulders, and then lift your right hip as far away from that right shoulder as you can. And then squeezing that left heel towards your glute, Take a strong active right leg, and then straighten the leg out, square off your hips, exhale, pull the knee towards your nose, round the upper back. Inhale, lift the leg all the way up and back, spread your toes, 
And as you exhale, step the foot forward in between the hands. Lower your right knee down. Keep the toes tucked under. Bring your hands up to your front thigh. You're going to press the leg away from you. Start to feel action in the legs. Left heel back, right knee forward. Pushing down so much into that right foot so that you can hover the right knee off the ground. Just do a little check. Make sure you're pushing down so that you could feel that lift, possibly. We're going to take our arms forward and up. Inhale. A couple deep breaths here. Finding the scissoring of the legs, so left heel back, right knee forward, finding stability through the hips to find that opening through the psoas. Deep inhales, full exhales. You're trying to find the calmness in your breath as you start to get more work and more action through your body. Give one more inhale. Exhale, bring your hands to the floor, scoot your back foot in slightly, and turn the foot onto its side. So those right toes are pointing towards one or two o'clock. And the left toes point straight ahead. As you inhale, you're gonna think about pushing the heels apart. So left heel pushes forward, right heel pushes back. Notice those hips kind of move apart. And as you exhale, I want you to pull your heels towards each other and allow your torso to fold. Doing that deep stretch in the hamstring. Inhale, push the heels apart, extend your spine. Exhale, heels together, fold in, strong legs. Inhale, last one, extend your spine, push the heels apart. Exhale, pull the heels towards each other as you fold. Inhale, long spine, bend your front knee, plant the hands, and step back, downward facing dog, hips up and back. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Full breath out through the mouth. Flip your right leg up, inhale, bend the knee, open the hip, and try and catch that left shoulder wanting to drop so you can keep it lifted, keep that left hip lifted. Straighten the leg, square off the hip, bring your right knee towards your right, tricep, as high as you can. Inhale, lift it up, and exhale, step the foot in between the hand. And lower the back knee down, keep the toes tucked under. Inhale, rise your arms up, kneeling crescent, Right away, find the action in the legs. And we're going to keep the belly pulled in, and we're going to lift our heel. So that left heel is going to be drawing in towards our glute. And it might feel like it doesn't go anywhere, and it might also, if you're not used to doing this active hamstring work, it might go into a cramp. Okay, if it cramps, just come out of it for a second and come right back in. So that's just your nervous system talking to you and telling you that you don't own that range of motion yet. Doesn't mean you can't get it. Okay, so we're gonna squeeze those knees, uh, the right heel and left knee towards each other as you pull that heel towards the glute. Deepening into that psoas stretch, moving it down into the quadriceps. Pull the belly in, lift tall, and then keeping this exhale, bend your elbows, find that cactus shape with your arms. So we're back bending into our upper back. The pelvis is tucked, so we're not in our lower back, but we're trying to lift our sternum. Like there's someone holding a string and pulling us up by our chest. Couple deep breaths, working to draw the left heel and right knee, left knee and right heel towards each other. Take one more breath, squeeze it in. Slowly release the back foot, reach your arms up, inhale, and then hands to the ground, exhale, straighten your back leg and step your right foot back, downward facing dog. Now if that's at all too much for your knee, you can always just Fold your mat over for a little extra cushion for that knee. I should have mentioned that before. Feet together, float your left leg up, inhale, bend your knee, open the hip right away. Think about that right underarm and right hip reaching away from each other. Straighten that left leg out, square off your hips, and exhale, bring your left knee towards your left tricep. Inhale, lift all the way up the back, stretch long. Exhale, step the foot in between the hands. Lower your right knee down. Inhale, reach your arms up, kneeling crescent. Find the scissoring of your legs. Right away, back toes are tucked. And then we're gonna slowly bend your right knee, pulling that heel towards your glute. So actively using your glute and hamstring to find this knee flexion. Reaching up, inhale. Exhale, bend your elbows, cactus shape. So there's a little balance work here as well. Think about lifting through your chest, back bending into that upper back, and finding the lift of your sternum. Visualize a string coming right out, of, right out of your chest, and you're being suspended from the ceiling. Keep action in the legs. 
drawing them towards each other. So we're supporting our pelvis, supporting our low back. Take one more breath. Slowly release the back foot. Reach your arms up. Inhale, hands to the floor. Exhale, straighten your back leg and step back. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Exhale. Bring the length in your spine. Inhale, shifting forward to your plank. Very slowly lower all the way up to your belly. Exhale. Arms down by your side, sending up for Shalabhasana again. Be all the way together. We're going to do alternating sides. So I want you to lift your left leg up towards the ceiling. Make sure that pubic bone is pressing down so we're supporting our low back. We're lifting our left leg up, and it's only lifting as high as our glute and hamstring can lift the leg. If you're starting to feel this in your QL on that left side of the low back, I want you to lower the foot down and re-tuck your pelvis. Okay, squeeze the glute, lift. And then we're gonna float our right arm up, squeezing the right shoulder blade, lifting the left hip, squeezing the left glute. Take a deep breath in and release down. Exhale. And lift your right leg up, squeeze the glute, rolling that leg up high from the inner thigh. And then float your left arm up. We're pressing down through the right hand as we lift the left arm up and the right leg. Stretching through the toes. Deep breath in. Full breath out, lowering back down one more. Lift the left leg, pressing down through the pelvis and the pubic bone. Pressing down through your left hand and float your right hand up. Pressing down through your left, good. Deep breath in, long spine. Continue to lift your navel away from the floor. Release, exhale. And float your right leg up, squeeze the glute. Press down through your right hand as you lift your left hand. Pull the belly in, squeezing those shoulder blades together, spreading your toes and rolling that right inner thigh towards the ceiling. And exhale, release. Bring your hands right next to your chest. Press yourself to your hands and knees. And round your back, exhale. So just moving the opposite direction. Pull the belly in, tuck your chin. Come into a flat back. Inhale, tuck your toes. Lift your knees, exhale. And holding here for 10. Nine soft elbows. Eight, seven, lift your navel in and up, pulling the ribs up. Five, four, three, two, and downward facing dog, hips up and back. Deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. One more deep breath in. Full breath out. Feet together. Float your right leg up towards the ceiling. Inhale, bend the knee, open the hip, checking with that left shoulder, lift away from the left hip. Straighten the legs, square off the hips, and exhale, pull that right knee towards your left tricep as high as you can. Inhale, lift the leg all the way up and back, and exhale, step the foot in between the hands. Stand the ball of your back foot this time. Inhale, rise up, crescent pose. We're gonna bend our elbows, lift our chest, find that cactus shape. Little bend in your back knee so that we're not in our low back. We're finding that pelvis. As you can see, there's a theme from class to class. This is the biggest thing that we focus on here. Okay, so lifting through the chest, squeeze those legs towards each other. So we want our legs to be active. And you're going to take your left arm and reach it underneath your right arm for eagle arms. So if it's hard to cross your hands like this, you just touch the back of the hands to each other. So left elbow underneath then just crossing the hands or touching the back of the hands together. Keep the belly in, lift, inhale, lift through your chest. Feel the lift of the sternum, but continue to feel that lift of the front of the hips. Couple deep breaths. Full inhales and exhales. Breathing into that upper back. Two more. Lifting your chest and you find a little more back bend in your upper back without losing that back leg. One more. And you're going to listen carefully. You're going to straighten your front leg. We're going to turn to the left and you're going to bend your left leg and unwind your arms. Okay. Bring your hands to your hips for a moment and feel that your hips are pushing evenly back and in line with your shoulders. So we don't want to be pushing our left hip back further than our right or vice versa. 
And we don't want our shoulders moving all the way over towards that foot. So you're trying to keep them in line with the hips. And maybe your hands come to the floor to support your spine here. So this might be enough. Maybe if you have a little more range of motion in your left leg, you can sink those hips and float your right toes up. So listen to your body. You either stay hovering or you can sink those hips down. If it's really easy to sink your hips towards the floor, I want you to try and prevent just dropping your hips down. Try and find some work and actions. Try and lift your hips away from the floor here. So if you have lots of mobility in the hips, we want to find some strength and stability there. Finding that length in your spine, whatever position you're in. Deep breath in. Big stretch in that right inner thigh, deepening into that left hip crease, working into the upper spine as long as you're lifting that chest. And then we're going to straighten into that left leg. And we're going to turn towards the back of your mat. So left foot is forward. We're facing the opposite direction now. You're just going to bend into that left leg. Keep your right hand down. Send your left arm up towards the ceiling. Open up that chest. And then notice if that right hip wants to drop towards the floor. Can you lift that right hip up? Maybe you even reach back with your left hand and use the fingertips of that left hand to pull that right hip up away from the floor. And then twisting your chest open. And that might feel a lot to reach back with your hand if you're not having that shoulder mobility. You just do your best to reach back there. Checking with that right shoulder, draw it away from your ear. And then everyone float that left arm back up towards the ceiling. Hand will come down to the floor. And you're going to walk yourself back through center and all the way back to the front of your mat. So the right foot is forward. Plant your hands and step your right leg back to downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Take your left leg up, inhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Right shoulder and right hip, find space away from each other. Straighten the left leg out and draw your left knee towards your right tricep as high as you can. Inhale, lift the leg back up. And exhale, step the foot in between the hands. Stand the ball of your back foot. Inhale, rise up, crescent pose. Reach your arms. Soft bend in your back knee. Exhale, lift your chest, cactus shape with your arms. Pulling that belly in. And then we're going to take our right arm underneath our left for eagle arms. Again, if you can't cross the hands, just touch the back of the hands. Get them as close as you can. Deep breaths. And squeezing those forearms together. Reaching your fingertips up as you draw your shoulders down the back. A little tuck of that belt buckle. Lifting the front of your pelvis up. And maybe you start to find a little more back bend in your upper back. Bring that low back supported with the pelvis. A couple more breaths. Finding space, finding lift. Scissoring those legs towards each other as if you could draw that left heel and right toe together. One more inhale. And as you exhale, you're going to straighten into the left leg. We're turning to the right. And you're going to bend into your right leg. Bring your hands to your hips. So left leg is straight, right leg is bent, try and even out the hips, reach your chest long, and then maybe your hands come to the ground, okay? If you have the mobility in that right leg and hip, maybe you sink those left hip, the left hip towards the ground and turn your toes up, okay? Breathing here, rather than just collapsing into that left hip, if you have the flexibility, I want you to press into that right heel to lift your hips away from the floor. And then whatever position you're in, find length in your spine. So reaching your chest forward, pulling the belly in, finding action in the lower body. Deep breaths. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Press into that right heel. Slowly start to straighten it slightly as you pivot all the way to the back of the mat. Right foot is forward, left leg is back. You're going to stay on the left fingertips and take your right arm up towards the ceiling. Open your chest. Okay. So a lot of times that left hip will drop down towards the floor as if we're limited in that upper back mobility. So we're going to try and reach back with that right hand and take the hand to the front of that left hip and try and lift the hip up. So now you should feel more work in that upper back. Okay. 
and we're stabilizing through the low back. Draw the left shoulder away from the ear and try and turn your chest open. And then everyone take that right arm up towards the ceiling without losing the legs. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, hands come down and you're gonna walk yourself back to the left all the way through center. And then back forward with the left leg facing the front. Plant your hands and step your left leg back. Downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Full breath out, exhale. Deep breath in. Full breath out. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Slowly bend your elbows, lower all the way down into your belly and release your feet. We're gonna take our arms forward in front of us. And you're gonna take the same grip of your fingertips, so like little gecko fingers. Take your feet all the way together, reaching the arms, elbows stay straight, but we're lifting through the pads of the, the fingertips, okay? Press down through the pelvis. You're gonna lift your left leg up, squeeze the glute, okay? So same work from Shalabhasana. Reach from your inner thigh, so try not to let the toes turn out. So inner thigh lifts, pelvis presses, and then we're gonna float our right arm up as high as we can. Try and lift your navel away from the floor. Deep breath in and release, exhale. Repress the pelvis down, pull the belly in and up. Float your right leg, squeeze the glute, inner thigh rolls up, and then press down through your right fingertips as you lift your left. Try to float that arm, connect your left shoulder to your right hip. Deep breath in and release, exhale. And then your hands right next to your chest, pull the belly in. Press to hands and knees and round your back. Exhale, so you're just reversing that position. Deep breath in, full breath out. And then tuck your toes, find a neutral spine, pack your shoulders, lift your knees, holding for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Press into those hands, three, two, and downward facing dog, you're stepping back. Deep breath in, deep breath out. And then come high into your tippy toes, staying on your tippy toes, walk your feet, slow, tiny little steps, all the way as high as you can to meet your hands, and then feet flat and forward fold. Roll up one vertebrae at a time, all the way up to stand, roll your shoulders back, and lift your chest. Bend your knees, drop your hips, chair pose, reaching the arms up. And a few breaths here. Look down towards your feet. Rock the weight towards your heels. So I want you to be able to see your toes. If your knees are far forward, I want you to try and pull the hips back. But at the same time, you have to pull the ribs in and lift your arms up. So lots of work through the core, lots of work through the hips. Start to sink a little bit deeper. Pull the belly in further. Lift your arms up. If this is too much for your shoulder mobility, just take those arms forward, but plug the shoulders back. Find your space. Take one more deep breath in. And exhale, hands down, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway up to lengthen your spine. Exhale, plant your hands, step back into your plank. Shifting forward, either staying on your toes or lower to your knees for chaturanga. Slowly lower, exhale, pausing halfway, take a deep breath in, full breath out, and then lowering all the way to your belly, inhale, cobra, chest forward and up, coiling your upper spine and hover your hands, good, pressing down through the pelvis, pressing down through all 10 toes, release your hands, exhale, press to your hands and knees, tuck your toes, downward facing dog, hips up and back. And then a wiggle of your hips side to side, Stretching through that low back. And then you're gonna lower your knees down to the floor. Good. So go ahead and turn sideways on your mat. We're gonna come into a 90-90. And I'm gonna have you go right shin forward. So have your right shin parallel to this long side edge of your mat and flex the foot. And then this back leg is gonna be to 90 as well. So front leg and back leg, 90 with each other. And then take this back foot and place it out so the knee is to 90 as well. We're gonna sit up tall with our spine. 
And for some of us, it might feel really challenging to sit upright, right? That's due to the limited internal rotation of our back hip. I'm gonna kick stand the foot out to the side slightly, okay? I want you to feel that both sides of the waist are evenly long. So if you can sit upright here and still have our spine straight, then you can go ahead and sit upright. If not, you're gonna kick stand out as far as you need to to straighten that spine out, okay? So some people might all be all the way down here onto our elbows, okay? So find the position that works for you. We're gonna do a little kinetic stretching with this front leg. I want you to keep the shin on the ground, but you're gonna be thinking about working all of this tissue on the top side of the leg. So you're gonna think about trying to get that foot off the ground as if it could actually pick up, but we're not going to pick it up. So I need to think about lifting the leg and notice how the calf turns on, the adductors turn on. Now I need to use that lift, that energy in the leg to shift your torso forward with a long spine. So if I were facing the sides, you can see my spine, I'm using this leg to shift forward but I'm not letting my background, right? I'm gonna find the end point of my hip flexion. And then from there, I'm gonna drive down through my foot, so I'm using my hip to push myself upright, okay? I'm gonna lift the leg using the top side of my leg to pull myself deeper into my hip stretch, and then I'm gonna drive my leg down to push myself upright. So we're working into the mobility of our hip, not our flexibility. Try and lift the foot to shift forward, Drive down to come upright, two more. Lift to shift forward, using your core, using your leg strength. Drive down to come upright, one more. Try and lift the leg to shift forward and hold, okay? So we've got that right leg forward, we're holding in that end point. You might be completely out to the side here and that's okay, you're working with whatever constraints you have, okay? From here, I want you to stay in this range, and we're just gonna walk our hands over to the left, sorry, to the right, so you're turning towards that front right leg. And then we're gonna take our left, sorry, our right elbow down, and you're gonna stretch that right arm out, okay? So we're lengthening from that left leg all the way through that left hand. Sometimes it's very challenging to mirror and remember the rights and the lefts, especially when our legs are twisted like this. So we're reaching to out with the left hand as we fold over our right leg. You might feel this into that QL on that left side. A couple deep breaths. Full exhales. Deep inhales. More length, more space. In the depth of the stretch that works for you. And then slowly walk the hands back up. And you're going to stay leaning into that right hand. And you're going to lift your left leg up as you sweep it around and it's gonna come outside the right leg. And you're gonna pull that right foot in closer. Okay, so we're kind of in this little twisted seat. You're gonna take your arm, your right arm in front of that left leg and then interlace the hands. You're gonna pull the leg towards you, pull and lift your chest and sternum up and then we're gonna to twist to the left. A couple deep breaths here. Pulling that leg in, trying to sink through the hips, lifting tall through the crown of the head. And we're going to unwind. And then you're going to lean back, try and uncross the legs, lean onto that left hip, and try and come into 90-90 on the other side as best you can without using your hands. Okay. So we've got our left leg forward, right leg back, find 90-90 with both legs. And then we're going to kickstand out as much as you need to to the left to support your spine. So find that straight spine wherever you are. And we're going to find our kinetic stretching with our front left leg. So keeping the leg on the ground, I want you to think about lifting that left foot off the ground. So you're working all of this tissue on the top side to pull yourself forward into your deep hip stretch. And now try and drive your foot down into the ground. So we're using our left hip to come upright. Try and lift the leg to shift forward. 
and drive down as you exhale to come upright. So we're working into the hip crease here. Inhale, shifting forward, but we're using our outer right left hip. Drive down to come upright. Lift the leg to shift forward. Find length. Drive down to come upright. Lift to shift. Two more. Drive down to come upright. Our spine is long and straight. Last one. Lift to shift forward and hold. Okay. We're going to start to walk our hands over to the left. So towards that front left leg, but off to the side. And listen to your body. I don't want you to go so far that you're twisting into your back, but try and find where you can still move into a slight twist and find some straightness from our back leg all the way through our spine. And we're going to take our left forearm down as we stretch our right arm forward and out. So we stretch through the lat, stretch maybe even through that right QL or left right side of the low back. And breathe. Deep inhales, deep exhales. And the more you reach through that hand, the deeper that stretch will be. Lock in somewhere. Using the inhales to bring oxygen into the tissues. Creating more space, more opening. And continuing with the, that Ujjayi breath. We feel the breath traveling in and out. We hear the breath. One more breath. Core, so lock yourself up using the support of your hands. We're going to keep kickstanding out to the left. You're going to lift that right leg up and bring it all the way around and cross it in front of the left leg. And then you'll pull that left heel in towards your glutes. And try and sit up tall on both hip bones as best you can. Okay, You're going to take your Left arm, hook it around the right leg, and then interlace your hands. So you nice and tall inhale, and twisting to the right, exhale. Few deep breaths here. Finding the length, sitting up tall, rooting down through the hips. Maybe closing the eyes. Slowly unwind, lean back slightly to uncross the legs, and then we're going to take our legs wide and we move the flesh of the hips out to the side. So wide might mean here, okay? So listen to your body, and if sitting here, even in this, this width of your feet, if it feels like we're really rounding through our back here, we just put a bend in our knees. So you have two options to find that long spine. One is to prop your hips up higher with pillows or blocks. The other is to just bend the knees, but goal is to have this long spine here, so we're not rounding into the low back. And if you have the ability to go wider, go wider, okay? Remove the flesh of the hips out to the side so you feel like you're sitting more on your sits bones, okay? Find action in the legs. So imagine that you could drag your heels back towards your hips so you feel those hamstrings engage a little bit, and then try and engage and lift your kneecap so those quads turn on slightly as well. And sit up nice and tall, inhale, this may be enough. If it is, and if you have a good stretch here, stay. Otherwise, you can start to walk your hands forward. Not a long hold, just a couple breaths. So maybe your feet are wide, maybe those feet are hips distance. Okay, find the spot that works for you, listen to your body. And try and maintain some work in the legs, so we're not just passively folding into a stretch here. We're gonna work the legs as we find that length through the spine and the deepening into the hamstrings, maybe even the inner thighs, depending on how wide your legs are. One more breath. Go ahead and walk your hands back up. 
take a hold of the back of the knees to help them come back in. And then we're gonna cross tightly at our shins. So we're gonna move into a Sukhasana or an easy pose. Um, and it's going to be a deep hip stretch, even though it's called easy pose. So we're gonna cross our shins. And rather than crossing our shins where our feet are really close towards our hips, it doesn't allow us to get really tight. I want you to bring your feet further away from you so that they're actually parallel to each other. And then you're gonna walk your feet apart as far as you can, okay? So we're trying to cross our legs like a pretzel, okay? And then you're gonna take the flesh of your hips one at a time, pull it out to the side that actually will allow you to get deeper into your hips. And then you're gonna take your thumbs and you're gonna place them right in the fronts of your hips, okay? Right in those hip creases. Now I want you to imagine that you could like take your tissue and move it out of the way, right? So we're gonna grip down and you're gonna press down so much that you feel like you're grabbing your muscles and you're gonna roll them out to the side, creating some space. Sit up tall as you inhale and pull those hips out and back and hinge forward, okay? You're gonna find the spot that feels like, okay, if I hinge anymore, I'm gonna start to round my back. I want you to back off from that. Keep a really long spine so that we're accessing a deeper area of our hips. And then one hand at a time, you'll slide the thumbs out from hip creases and support out in front of you, okay? So pulling your chest forward, inhale, finding length, and deepening into those hips as you exhale. So whatever leg is in front, I have my left leg in front, you wanna, you'll feel the deeper stretch in that leg that is, has the shin in front or forward. Your eyes. Count to four as you inhale. And five as you exhale. And four feels easy and short. Increase that inhale count to five or six. And increase that exhale count to six or seven. Notice with each passing breath, maybe you're able to gain a little more space. Go ahead and walk the hands back up. Lean back, switch the cross of the legs. Cross tightly, so walking those feet far apart. Remove the flesh of the hips out to the side. Thumbs into those hip creases, press down, work the muscle and tissue out of the way, lift tall through your spine, and fold forward. And then one hand at a time, you'll slide the hands out in front to support you. And closing the eyes, big deep breaths. Find your space, lengthen the inhales. Slightly longer exhales. Notice if there's anywhere in your body that you're slightly holding on to some tension. Relax. Maybe it's the space between your forehead. Maybe it's your jaw. Maybe it's your toes. Connecting and tuning in to our own physical bodies. Creating that mind-body connection. One more deep breath here. Walk your hands back up. And uncross the legs. We'll turn forward on our mats. And with the feet flat, arms forward, using your belly, slowly roll. All the way back down onto your back. And pull your knees in towards your chest. One last roll on your back before Shavasana. Round your nose towards your knees. Kick your knees towards your nose. Find yourself into a tiny little package. And then exhale into your Shavasana. So legs out, palms up towards the ceiling. Snuggle your shoulders underneath you. And allow your hips to settle. Allow your whole front body to rest and open. Feeling the weight of your body, the heels, the legs, the hips. This 
spine, the shoulders and the arms. Lastly, the head. And feel all of that sink into the floor, into your mat. And with each passing breath, allow yourself to melt like a puddle into your mat, off the mat, to the space around you. Take a deep, full breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth, exhale, side out. And allow yourself to be still. If you have the time in your schedule today, I invite you to stay here longer in your resting pose, your shavasana. Otherwise, if you have to get on with the rest of your day, stretch your arms, stretch your toes. Reaching through the fingertips, and bending your knees, roll onto your right side. Gently pressing yourself up to a comfortable seat. Hands resting on the legs. And sitting up tall, whatever posture you're in. And stacking the shoulders over the hips. And just taking a moment to check in. Notice the body. Notice the mind. Maybe there's a little more quietness, softness. And drawing the hands to the heart center. Inhale, lifting your chest. And exhale, bowing your chin towards your fingertips. So honoring yourself and this practice and taking time out of your day with gratitude. Inhale, lifting the head. Thumbs to your third eye center. Light knee honors the light knee. Namaste.